Story Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a thriller, mystery, and horror film called The Requiem. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. After having a miscarriage, Jay and her husband Kyle stay at a beautiful over-the-water resort in Vietnam to hopefully heal from the traumatizing experience. However, Jay still often gets episodes whenever she remembers the incident, proving it difficult for her to sleep at night. But that doesn't stop them from having a fun time around Vietnam, seeing different tourist attractions, and asking about the history of the place. While resting at a beachside cafe, Jay gets a phone call from her mother and sister while Kyle plays soccer with the staff. Her mother and sister try to check in on her to see that she's okay and safe, making sure that she's trying to move on from what happened to her. As her phone conversation ends, Jay catches the weather segment on TV, seeing that there's an approaching storm. The two go back to their room at the floating villa, and Kyle is more than enthusiastic about jumping into the water to swim. Meanwhile, Jay is preoccupied with trying to get a decent signal for their phone, but it doesn't seem like it'll be working, even telling Kyle that the SIM card he bought is useless. Trying to get his wife's mind off things, Kyle urges Jay not to stress out about anything and just enjoy the vacation. He also reminds her that the purpose of the trip was to get away from the world for the time being. Convinced, Jay hops into the water and the two enjoy a moment of sightseeing and swimming. Then, after the swim, they rest for a while, taking refuge at a nearby rock formation, when suddenly, Kyle slips and cuts his foot. Seeing the blood on the water reminds Jay of her miscarriage, and she suddenly gets another episode. Kyle tries to reassure her, but they end up arguing about what happened when he says that their baby would have died either way. That night, Jay tells Kyle that she can't stay there any longer, feeling too overwhelmed by her unpredictable episodes. Thankfully, Kyle understands, telling her that they can leave the next day. As they try to sleep, the storm brews in the distance, starting to get more erratic as time goes by. Then, a sudden noise wakes Jay up, but Kyle waves it off, telling her that the storm will pass. Then, they receive a call from the resort staff, notifying them that they can relocate inland if they're worried about the storm. But after having some time to think about it, they tell the staff that they'll stay where they are. However, this seems to be the wrong move, because a few moments later, the storm gets worse. The water level rises and breaches their room, breaking the glass doors before it gets swept along the waves of the wild current. The two get thrown around the room, and the bed slides over to Kyle, breaking his leg. Jay tries to help him out, but he tells her to call for help instead. Unfortunately, the phone is already dead. The room gets hit by a stronger wave, further dislodging it from the bridge that connects it back to the mainland. Then, the sudden force throws Jay upward and makes her pass out for a few seconds after hitting her head. Kyle rushes to check on Jay, and thankfully, she's fine, although their room is now getting carried by the water away from land. They debate whether to swim for it, thinking they should try to get back to safety before it's too late. Looking back to the land, they try to shout and wave for help, but the storm is too strong, and they're already getting too far. At the same time, most of the people inland are also scrambling to get away to safety, too distracted to be able to notice them. Feeling hopeless, they decide to try their chances with swimming, but before Jay could even go to the water, she slips when they hit a large rock. Kyle tries to pick her back up into the room, but it's getting too slippery. He then sees another rock coming into view, fully aware that it'll hit Jay. So he pushes her down into the water and uses the water currents to get her pulled to the other side. Jay then evades the rocks and successfully swims back up to the room. But unfortunately, she sees Kyle even more wounded, immediately looking away from the blood to prevent another episode from happening. Now that they're starting to get too far away, Kyle tells Jay that it's too late to do anything and that they should just wait for the resort staff to rescue them. However, Jay is adamant about leaving their room, even offering to swim back to the rocks alone to signal for help. Still, Kyle insists that they should just stay put because it's too dangerous. With no other choice, Jay helps Kyle with his wounds before huddling close for the night, hoping for a better tomorrow. However, when they wake up, they're even further lost at sea 
with just the bare foundations of the room intact. Looking around, Jay sees nothing but the horizon. Jay starts becoming hysterical, getting angry that Kyle wouldn't listen to her idea about staying on the rocks so that Rescue could see them better. But despite that, Kyle still insists that they would have died if they stayed in the middle of the raging storm. Since they're still drifting, they plan to try and survive for as long as they can, not having the option to swim to land anymore. Jay swims around their room to look for useful items that could be stuck underneath the floorboards, such as clean drinking water and their bags. But a school of fish suddenly startles her, forcing her to climb back up. While trying to recuperate, Kyle's blood drips from his wound and into the water. Then, as the sun rises, the water bottle perched on the side of their room reflects the rays of the sun, accidentally burning Kyle's thigh. Meanwhile, Jay sees an aircraft in the distance and starts to shout for help, but it isn't really the most effective of strategies. Remembering what happened with the water bottle, they attempt to make a smoke signal with fire, but it's too late, and the sun is already setting. The next day, they start to get dehydrated, and Kyle's condition is just getting worse. Thankfully, Jay sees a yacht in the distance, and with the sun back up in the sky, Kyle's able to start a fire. As the yacht slowly goes away and fails to notice them, Jay insists on making the fire bigger so they could be seen. However, this works against them as they accidentally set their whole room on fire, ridding them of the only thing that's keeping them afloat. They then dive into the water, watching the room slowly burn, and once again, Kyle's blood gets mixed into the seawater. They decide to hold on to the surviving planks, when suddenly, they see a finned animal circling them. To calm his panicking wife, Kyle checks it out and apparently sees a shark. Jay spots a bigger woodboard they can use, so they paddle for dear life until they're able to prop themselves up to the raft as sharks try to get to them. Jay desperately pulls Kyle up to the raft until the sea animal catches up to them, but it turns out to be just a pod of dolphins. As they fall asleep on the raft, actual sharks start to prey on them now separating them as it breaks their raft apart. Then, a sleeping Kyle falls into the shark-infested water, so Jay desperately tries to save her husband, but he's already bleeding too much. Fortunately, Kyle manages to return to the surface, but can't find the strength to climb back on the raft anymore, so he just tells Jay to start paddling away. Due to dehydration and exhaustion, Jay passes out. She wakes up in the middle of the night, able to come across land. She gleefully stands up, trying to wake Kyle as she stands on the beach. Unfortunately, Jay realizes that Kyle is already dead, and sees both of his legs have already been eaten by sharks, hence why he couldn't climb aboard the raft anymore. Still, Jay tries to force Kyle awake, but she knows that it's futile. She grieves for Kyle, hugging his corpse until she finally releases him into the sea. She then starts to dream that Kyle is still alive, his legs back intact as he says that he'll always be with her. However, when she regains consciousness, she sees the rest of Kyle's body being devoured by sharks. For some reason, Jay walks back to the water before getting wounded by the reefs. Because of her blood, the sharks get drawn back to her, and one is able to bite down on her leg. Then, as she tries to run towards safety, she grabs a coral and bashes it to death. In pain, Jay dresses her wounds, but passes out again afterward. When she wakes up, she continues to walk inland, and after trudging through a seemingly endless beach, she sees a small cliff. Jay also finds a small coracle boat occupied by a sleeping fisherman, so she immediately swims over and climbs aboard. She grabs a jug of clear liquid, thinking it's water, but as it turns out, it's alcohol. Jay wakes up the fisherman and shows him her leg as she tries to plead for help, wanting to be taken back to land. However, the language barrier is getting in the way. Instead of rowing back first, the fisherman offers to help Jay with her wound, so she lets him. The fisherman turns a hook into a needle and takes a thread before disinfecting Jay's wound with the alcohol, then drinking a bit himself. He instructs her to breathe as he starts to sew her injury before dressing it once more, urging her to lie down and rest. The fisherman dives down to the sea and checks his trap, looking if he has caught any fish. But unbeknownst to him, 
a bigger fish is lurking behind him. As the boat gets rocked, Jay immediately tries to look for the fisherman, only to see blood, as well as the fisherman's severed hand. She tries to remove the boat's anchor, but it's too hard for her to do so. Suddenly, the fisherman appears from below and shouts for help, although when Jay tries to help him, he accidentally pulls her into the water. The fisherman tries to grab her to stay afloat as she swims back to the boat, and when she tries to help him up once more, the shark gets to him again and kills him for good. Jay attempts to lift the anchor again and succeeds, but she's still not safe from the hungry shark. She takes the boat's handheld outboard engine and starts it back up, using the blades to cut through the shark as it tries to lunge at her. However, the shark is still alive and prepares to attack Jay again. Unfortunately, when she tries the engine for the second time, it's already out of gas. Then, out of nowhere, the huge shark jumps from the water and tips her boat over. Jay hurriedly tries to take back the anchor as she sees the shark swim back to her. And while she panics, she still manages to hit the shark inside the mouth with the anchor and kill it. Then, once it's gone, Jay climbs over the tipped over boat. Luckily, it isn't long before she sees a nearby land with people who notice her. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.